Our next story this morning. It's been a deadly week on Mount Everest. British climber Robin Haynes Fisher was yesterday confirmed as one of the eight people who've died on the world's highest peak in the last seven days. Yes, overcrowding and high winds are believed to be contributing factors. We're going to talk to the mountaineer Martin Hewitt. He's at Everest Base Camp this morning. He successfully summited earlier in the week. He joins us now live from Nepal. Uh, Martin, thanks very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us on Breakfast TV this morning. We're very grateful to you. Um, just to explain to us what the situation was like when you summited. We saw an amazing picture, which you may or may not have seen, of a queue of hundreds of people trying to wait to get to the top. Um, what was it like for you? Yeah, very similar. Um, this season, in essence, the jet stream didn't move north for quite some time. And that resulted in a, a weather window in which a lot of people were trying to get up to some of the mountain and um, so overcrowding was a, a significant issue. Did it feel dangerous to you? We, um, we were very lucky, we prepared well, we were quick on the hill, we had a very professional team around us and I must have overtaken at least 100 people from the South Col to the South Summit. Um, the big issue you've got is that you have a limited amount of oxygen. Most climbers will use supplementary oxygen in order to reduce the risk of frostbite. Um, and when, you do, when you're doing that, you've got to get up and down within a certain time frame. And the reality is that there are a number of people on that mountain that simply do not have the experience, the technical skill, the fitness or the robustness to be there. And because mostly Nepali companies will take anybody who's willing to pay, they're on the hill. And they shouldn't be there. Yeah, it's interesting that you make that point. So are they too too free and easy with selling these permits to people? That's basically what you're saying. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, you pay the money. And, and, I mean, there's a number of issues on the mountain which uh, which the professional operators and some of the commercial operators that have been here for decades have constantly been trying to fight, push back, try to professionalize what's going on. But ultimately, you're dealing with corruption. You're dealing with people that make more organisation will take your money and let you go. They don't do any due diligence whatsoever on the people or the clients that they're taking to um, attempt the summit. Um, now, you, you just to talk briefly about you. I mean, you're you're very experienced. You were in the military. Um, you're in the middle of doing the adaptive Grand Slam, which is the seven highest peaks in the world, and going to the North Pole and the South Pole. Um, I was reading this morning, there are fewer people, able-bodied explorers who've done that than have walked on the moon. And you, you'd be the first person uh, with a prosthetic limb to do that. Is that correct? Um, not in my case. In my case, I've actually got a paralysed arm. I was shot in Afghanistan and the, uh, the bullet never going to have a paralysed arm. I, I climb with the use of one arm. Um, but our project, uh, in, in essence, is all about trying to demonstrate what can be achieved with disability if you are operating with a professional team and you prepare properly and thoroughly and you mitigate every risk that you can. Um, we're trying to change the perceptions of what can be achieved with disability. Um, I just, frankly, have not experienced what I have in the past two months. I wish other outfits would take a similar approach. Mm. Uh, Martin, we're really grateful to you for talking to us um, and very best of luck with the rest of your challenge. Clearly you are well prepared and you are ready for it. And uh, <laughs> to, to, to talk about Everest as, as a hill, you, you said you're on the hill. Um, you obviously uh, have got it well within your compass and we're very grateful to you this morning for talking to us. Uh, Martin Hewitt there speaking to us uh, from Everest Base Camp. Gosh, I didn't realise that there was that much difference between the teams that could prepare you. So it's obviously really important. Uh, I, I, that's one of the most... I mean, we were speaking yesterday on the programme to people who, who were talking about how free and easy it is to get up there. And, you know, he, he was very powerful, wasn't he, talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look at what the weather's got in store on this beautiful bank holiday that we've got coming up. Louise is here. Very good morning to you, Louise. <laughs> Morning. I think I'll stick for a nice walk in the Chilterns, really. It's about my comfort level. But a lot of cloud around this morning. It's a mild start.